Hi everyone, my name is Charles, and in this uh, tutorial, which is part four of the OpenSCAD video series, we are going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about multi-line comments and the cylinder and its possible parameters. Okay, so let's get started. So in the previous video, we talked about comments, which we create just by two slashes. Uh, now that's great for one line, we can wa write whatever we want. Um, but say we move on to the next line, there's still stuff um, maybe that we want to get rid of. So if there's a large section that we want to comment out, um, then uh, there's a method to do that. So we don't use just the backslashes, we use one backslash and a star. And on the other end of that, we need a star and a backslash. So if we condense that together, we can get rid of whatever's here. Um, it goes like this, slash, star, star, slash. And then what's, whatever's in between the two stars, uh, however many lines, it doesn't matter. You just, it'll be commented out, you can try and render it, and nothing will happen for stuff in between the lines. Um, so we'll say this is a multi line. Oh, there's probably that a line. And there we go. There is a multi-line comment, and that's how you do multiple-line comments. It's just something probably important to know. Not too big of a deal, but pretty useful. Okay, next we're going to move on to the cylinder. And this has a lot of parts, so you're going to have to bear with me. But just like cube, um, we just enter it, and it has a default version. So if we scroll in, then we can see what we get. And this thing doesn't look much like a cylinder, um, but we're going to tweak its parameters just like we did with the cube and hopefully end up with something that we can use. I'm pretty confident we will. So uh, I think we should start by just looking at a circle because essentially a cylinder is a circle in a way brought into 3D. So I did a little drawing. And as you can see, we have the circle here, and uh, we have two important words uh, that we need to know. We have radius and diameter. And essentially what radius is, is a line drawn from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. And the diameter is uh, a line drawn from one, jet, one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle, and it passes through the center of the circle. And so we can see it's relatively obvious that the diameter is two times the radius. So we just need to take note of that, keep that in mind when we're making shapes in general in OpenSCAD. So here, so it's fairly intuitive. If we want to define a diameter or radius, uh, let's start with a radius, and we'll say it's 10 millimeters. And then we can render that f5, we end up something huge, and this is what we get. Now we notice the number of sides have changed, and we're gonna, we're gonna come back to that just to uh, specify them. We can determine how fine it is, but we're gonna look at that a little bit later. So, the next thing you might wanna do for a cylinder or change for a cylinder is its height. So it, that's just H. We say H is equal to, I don't know, let's say 50, 50 millimeters. So now we have a cylinder with a height of 50 millimeters and a radius of 10 millimeters, which means from the center to the edge is 10 millimeters. So maybe we want to change the diameter. 
uh, we, we want to define a diameter instead of a radius. Maybe that works better for our math. So all we do is we change R to D. And now we're defining the diameter and not the radius. So try and guess what will happen now. If you guess it shrunk, you were right. So since the diameter is 10, that means the radius is 5. So if you were to define a radius, but make that same radius the diameter, then the, your cylinder would shrink. Don't worry too much about that. This is just essentially ways to define it. Now, you may notice this might not be the most helpful orientation for us because the bottom of our cylinder is on the origin. Now, there are situations where this is very helpful, but this might not be one of them. So, similar to a cube, we can say center is equal to true. And that puts the center of our cylinder on the origin. Um, yeah, and that can be helpful depending on how you want to move it around. We're going to get to that in a bit. Um, so now let's address the number of sides of a cylinder. As you can see, there's a few here. Uh, I'm not going to count them all, but you can see there's a few. Maybe we want more, maybe we want less. It can determine how fine we have our cylinder, or maybe we just want a different shape, maybe a hexagon or a heptagon. So uh, this is a special value. We say dollar sign Fn equals. So maybe we want a hexagon. Let's say we want a hexagon. Say it's six. A hexagon has six sides, so dollar sign Fn equals six. And we end up with a hexagonal prism, or our cylinder has six sides. Um, around the edge. I mean, technically it has more than that, but we're just concerned about the ones around the edge. Um, but now maybe we want something as close to a cylinder as we can get. So we can say 200. We want our cylinder to have 200 sides. And um, we can see this looks very much like a cylinder and would be pretty good. Pretty good approximation because we never quite get a cylinder, but we get something pretty close. Um, an important thing to note, if you have a hexagon, and I'm going to change this back to the radius, because this is a very specific issue, it's in the documentation just to take note of, that the distance from the center to a point is the radius and that the distance from the center to the edge is not the radius, it's less than the radius. So that can potentially cause some issues in your de design. It's just important to take note of that. Don't worry too much about it. If you don't need to worry about it, if you're not creating hexagons, that's great. Don't worry too much. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. Now, another special thing that you can do um, with cylinders. I'm going to comment this out just so we have this for later uh, and copy and paste it so we have something similar. Uh, we can essentially make a cone out of the cylinder. So we have to specify the first radius and the second radius. So we say R1 is equal to 10. R2 Need another comma there is equal to maybe you want it just slightly smaller two, and we end up with the bottom radius being ten. That means the distance from the center to the edge is ten, and up here the distance from the center to the edge is two. So if we want a really pointy cone, we can just make it zero, and that's fine. And we have uh, a cone that comes to a point, and that's how you create that. So that's mostly all there is to a cylinder. You can also specify uh, this being a diameter as opposed to a radius. And it becomes thinner because if we change it to diameter, it shrinks. Don't worry too much. Um, that's a possibility for 
creating a comb. There are other ways, but don't worry too much. This is a this is a good way of creating a comb if you need a cone for some purpose. Okay, that's mostly it for a cylinder. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.